feel anxious about the climate crisis? I feel very anxious because it's under the power is out of our hands. It's in it's in corporations, it's in government, it's high level institutions. We're mainly blamed for it, and I think we're going to suffer the most. When I say we, I mean general population. But yeah, you kind of do feel powerless. You can make small choices and behavioural changes in your own life, but at the end of the day, you need those systemic structural changes to actually make a difference. What do you picture in the event of the climate crisis? Worst case scenario, I think extreme um, natural like natural disasters, extreme weather events, um, a lot of displacement, a massive refugee crisis. Because I feel as though the the most hard, the hardest hit areas are going to be those developing nations, and yeah, I don't think we're prepared for how badly it could potentially go. So properly apocalyptic, I feel. Yeah. Um, how easy is it for you to be sustainable in your choices? It's sometimes inconvenient, but I would say it's relatively easy. You can make small changes in your life to kind of be more sustainable, reuse your bags and try and use less plastic, try and use public transport. You could grow your own food, you can become, you can change your diet. There are choices you can make as an individual. They're small and they do make the difference. Like, you know, for example, just not, you know, you're not using loads of water and turning lights off and, using energy saving bulbs. There are really small like um, nudge policies that the governments have been putting in slowly through the years, like nudging the consumer to make these choices because behavioral change takes like 25 years to actually take into effect. Yeah, I think it is easy to be sustainable, but it, it could be complemented by the actual companies in the first place, making the sustainable choices. So then the, the choice is not on us and the pressure is not on us as a consumer, and then we don't get the blame. So we wouldn't even have to make those sustainable choices if in the first place we had the best, most sustainable option to choose from. Do you think it's on individuals or corporations to stop the crisis? A little bit of both, but proportionally I would say, or obviously corporations, they are the ones influencing elections and politicians and law um, and legislation. They're the ones blocking or supporting really damaging policies that are essentially just keeping us from actually progressing. So. I would say it's 100% really on, on them to kind of step up. There should be some harsh regulations, there should be some harsh pol um, penalties for those corporations that are polluting the world and that aren't contributing um, in a more like sustainable way. So um, what would you say to big corporations if you could say anything? <laughs> that's allowed. <laughs> it's time to stop sort of, I think, shifting the blame and the biggest polluters, I think they've been aware for a very, very long time. I mean, it's, we know that they have, that they're kind of damaging the environment um, and they're responsible for a vast majority of our problems. And it's about just taking responsibility really and having a bit of empathy for the rest of us, I suppose. I mean, it's just about morality, but you can't rely on corporations when you have like private companies, when they've got shareholders to pay and stakeholders and dividends. That's really all a for-profit company is focused on and especially huge organisations, oil companies um, and huge brands like Unilever with the palm oil deforestation. It is about putting pressure on them and the only way I think we can do it is government regulation and also the fact like public pressure so shaming those companies constantly and giving them bad press, it's hard to stop buying their products because a lot of them are like necessities, but I think we can definitely give them a bad image and that could affect sales, which could affect profit. And I think that's the only way you can kind of impact that. Was the climate crisis a reason for joining the course that you're on? I think it might have contributed to it. I definitely, I think maybe if I was in a rosy world where everything was okay, maybe it wouldn't have been such a need for me to do this. But it was also it was a lot of other factors. It's such competitive market conservation. You're not paid well and there's a lot of highly skilled people. Um, so, I've, I mean, my the main reason for joining was basically it's something that I'm, you know, passionate about without using that sort of word. It's altruistic, yeah. You're doing it because you enjoy it and it can help other people. It can help it can help communities and help species. You're doing it for the for the greater good without sounding like too pompous, you know.